Hi, I'm Jim, W6LG, your ham radio Elmer here on YouTube. Welcome to my radio room here in Rockland, California. I've got some fans going and I'll explain why. There's a fan on top of that amplifier, actually two fans on top of that amplifier. There's an air conditioner up there, a heat pump, making all kinds of noise. But that's okay. When we talk about amateur radio, we often, if we're dealing with antennas and coax and other things, switches, we're often talking about dB. And in this case, we're going to talk about dB loss. dB loss. If we have 100 feet of RG8X and we put 1,000 watts into it, it's rated at 1,500, uh, and we lose, let's just guess, just, just pick a number, let's say 500 watts. That, that's exaggerating just a bit. But let's say we put 1,000 watts into it, we get 500 watts out of it. Where does that 500 watts go? Does it go into space? Does it go into the ground? If you've driven a ground rod does it, and you connect it to that, does the RF go to ground? Where does that loss go to? What is it? How does it happen? Well, uh, very quickly we're going to do this test and then I'm going to reconfigure everything back for 20 meters because right now it's all set at 10 meters. The big amp is seldom bit on 10 meters, so I'm going to be really careful with it. Um, and I'll be looking at it with a temperature gun also. So we're going to look at the coax also. I built this out of an old um, field strength SWR meter. And uh, it's on. I'm going to shut it off. It's battery operated. It's got um, a... Um, uh, an amplifier circuit in it that's broad range from like three or four megahertz up to I don't know one gig or something so it's in there amplifying anything it picks up with the antenna I want to see if anything's being radiated I don't want to radiate a signal I just want it to go into my big dummy load which is you'll see in a second so where does that RF go we're putting a thousand watts in 500 watts coming out. Where does it go? Let's go find out. Alright, so I've got this to sense, now turning it on now, to sense loss, or uh, not loss, well, loss into space. Lost in space. And um, I'm going to get the other camera going. I'm going to try to get out of the, get my balding head out of the way. And uh, so you can see, as soon as I back out, it should show you the two uh, bird watt meters. One bird watt meter is looking at reflected SWR, the other one's looking at forward, S uh, sorry, reflected power, forward power. Um, so if anything gets screwy, I can see it right away. Plus, I've got some other things I can look at, like the uh, uh, the modified Drake amplifier has a built-in watt meter. So let's see if we can just very quickly figure out where the loss goes, what happens with that loss. And I'm going to measure the temperature of the coax first. And it's pretty much 82 degrees. 82 and a half. Um, and Celsius, 27.3. So that's our starting point. And let's see what happens when we put power into it. What happens to that RF? And I'm going to back away. The other camera's up and sort of in the right position. You'll be able to see a portion of the dummy load. Sorry about the noise. I know it's pretty strong, but um, I had to turn on fans. I don't want to lose the amplifier. Okay, so here we go. I'm going to switch uh, cameras, um, like I said, and get me out of the way. And then see what happens. And so we're going to do, I'm going to do a carrier. Uh, then I'm going to press the play button and play a 20-second CQ. 
and do that several times and see what happens. Is the coax going to heat up? Is that where the loss goes? Or does it get radiated somehow? Or does it go into that magic ground rod? The coax, as I said, is at um, 27.3 uh, Celsius. I don't think that's going to show up. And same thing there. Uh, 28 and 26.7. Alright, I did do a little bit of testing because I had to tune up everything. So we're going to use uh, two antenna tuners. So the SWR is absolutely one-to-one. -one. And right now I'm going to key things and keep my eye on the grid current and the play current and make sure I'm not burning up the tube. Okay, I'm putting a 500 watts key down solid carrier. And uh, let's go ahead and see if... Um, if the coax warms up any, uh, not so far. Okay, so I'm going to play this CQ and see what happens with that. And I'm on the dummy for sure. And yes, the lights are on the dummy. So here goes. I'm going to do the automatic CQ. and uh, get my head out of the way again. So let's see what happens. Okay, that's a thousand watts. Coax is still at 83, 85. Okay, 85.6, 85.8, 85 okay, at the beginning of the coax, it's about um, 80, depends on where I measured, about 87 degrees. At the end of it, it's about uh, 83. And watt meters reading 900 watts into the coax. Um, the bird watt meter on the shelf will not is not peak reading. Okay, 86. Eighty one at the end of the coax, eighty six at the beginning. Place again. My uh, outgoing uh, device is not showing any power or not sensing any RF. Eighty seven degrees, which is thirty about thirty and a half. 31 degrees C. Call CQ again. Okay, another message going out. 90, 90.1. At the beginning of the coax. And uh, 80, 80.0 80 at the end. So. 26, 26 and a half versus um, 32 at the beginning. Okay, the top of the amplifier is 107 degrees. All right, play again. Okay, coming up on 100 degrees, 98, 98.4. Come back up, cools off pretty quickly, 98.4, 98.6.
Okay, that's 1,350 watts. 107, 108, 113, 116. Well, that's interesting. As I almost a kilowatt coming out the other end, 116, 117, 44, 48, 50. All right. I'm going to shut down the noise. I'm not sure how much of this is being recorded. And then we'll go back to resetting everything. So I think. Ouch. Man, it is hot. There's, uh, boy, some turns on the inside. Yeah. Hundred twelve, hundred thirteen, hundred seventeen, hundred twenty, hundred twenty degrees. Okay, let me uh, shut things down, switch cameras, or maybe I'll just let it cool off. Uh, I'm gonna go back to the other camera. Well, when we talk about loss. Now what are we talking about? We're talking about heat. So it's converting uh, that loss in the coax uh, very quickly at 1500 watts, rose like crazy. I probably could have gotten it up to 150 degrees if I'd really gone key down for a long time. Don't want to do that. I had to retune the amp and the uh, matchboxes, hook up the demi load, reconfigure the station for 10 meters. Oh. I'm going to disconnect uh, the coax and get it configured for 20. It'll take a couple of minutes and hopefully the coax will cool down in the meantime. But literally I found a, a, a portion of the coax is really hot. All right. I see the noise level is really high. So stand by a second. I'll be right back and hopefully uh, less noise. But I think I answered the question. Where does the loss go? It becomes heat and it's dissipated by the coax. So uh, I'm going to stop the recording and see what we got. Well, that was interesting and uh, for me, uh, and I hope for you too. Um, RF parts, I'm looking at their, one of their charts now. Rates RG8X, which is what I was using, um, at 350 watts continuous. You have to define continuous. 700 watts CW and 1KW single sideband. Um, I would say that would be the absolute max for good quality RG8X into a low SWR. Get it into a high SWR and I would derate the coax. Continuous in some cases means 15 minute transmission. 15 minutes off can mean 30 minute transmission, which is a long time, and then 30 minutes off. Uh, also, when you talk about uh, rating wire, uh, coax, and other things, at what temperature? Um, according to uh, some sources, they're rating the coax at 40 degrees C or a little over 100 degrees Fahrenheit. So be wary of putting a kilowatt into that kind of coax at high power. The other thing I learned was, because I grabbed a hold of it, and I found a hot spot and then moved my hand around, and it wasn't hot down a couple of feet or up a couple of feet. So I think what I was seeing was the velocity factor, which we've talked about before, and I may, may have hit a high current place where the center conductor was being heated now the center conductor is 16 gauge and it's generally not rated for current. There are some places that do some ratings, but the NEC doesn't <clears throat> at, uh, at 40 degrees C. I prefer 40 degrees C because it's around 100 degrees and I don't want to get the coax any hotter than that. Uh, a third thing that I learned besides the power handling, the hotspot, the third thing was as I heated up the coax with one kilowatt um, and it got hot, the losses increased slightly. So as the coax heated, the center conductor heated, the dielectric heated, and I think the dielectric losses increased. 
We could have gone on and done other tests. Uh, there are lots of things we can do. I picked RG8X for a reason. I knew it would not be good. I had done it before. I did it at 28.5 megahertz into a dummy load. I made certain that nothing would damage the amplifier. That was my big concern because I've done that before with the coax shorts and that's not good for the amplifier. I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, before you buy coax and you run it outside to an antenna, I know weight is an issue. Think about a larger diameter coax. I did not use RG8, RG213, or LMR400. I have all of those things because I knew it just simply would not heat with a kilowatt or a kilowatt and a half. Um, now, there's some friends of mine in South Africa that run really large diameter. Uh, I'm looking to see if it, it's not even, it's larger than this. Uh, it's almost two inches in diameter and they don't want to lose any dB anywhere. So their systems are designed with um, as low a loss as they can get. And I agree with a lot of that. I don't want to incur losses because somebody will say, well, there's only one dB loss with that thing. And then you think, well, okay, I got that thing. And then I've got this other thing. And then I've got this and now we're up to 3 dB loss uh, because it's 1 dB here, 1 dB there, 1 dB over there. Now we've got 3 dB. Um, can the other station here 3 dB? Yes, no question. Um, 3 dB is a lot of loss. It's 50%. Another reason not to use RG. All right, I hope you've enjoyed that. If you have a comment, uh, post it below. Some will criticize I use coiled wire. Um, that's okay. Um, go ahead. Others may have some other ideas. There are some people who watch the videos who are absolute experts in coax and coaxial cables and, as I found out, also in tubes. Um, by the way, the next video I'm sort of thinking about doing with that amplifier over there is backing off with a camera and heating up the tubes just so you can see what it looks like. It's a really pretty thing. Uh, if you if you want to look at some examples of that, um, the El Paso, El Paso Tube Amp, I think is the guy's website. Really a nice guy. Uh, has several videos testing 3400 and, and uh, 3500 and 4400 and other tubes. And it's fun just to watch him go through things. So if you have a chance, um, look on U uh, YouTube and find his website. It's really interesting. For now, with a sore back, which is why I was leaning so much in the beginning of this from flipping that thing over. Every time I picked it up, it hurt my back, and I didn't realize it till the next day. I'm Jim, W6LG, with a sore back in Rockland, California, saying please do subscribe and leave a comment and a thumbs up or a thumbs down. Either way, I get the same points. 73. See you later. Bye-bye.